Okay. Hello, thank you for joining us today for Virtual College Fair, St. Mary's College of Maryland. I'm Katie Brown from the Frederick County Public Libraries. There are just a few things I wanna go over before we get started. This program is pre-recorded and airing as part of the two-day Virtual College Fair event. The recording of this program will be available on the library's Facebook, YouTube channel, and Teen Discord server. I'm here today with Caitlin Woods from St. Mary's College of Maryland. We will be discussing SMCM through a Q&A format. If at any point during the program you have questions for Caitlin, please feel free to leave a comment and we will be sure to pass it along. Thank you for being here, Caitlin. Before we get started with the questions, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Caitlin Woods. I am an assistant director of admission with St. Mary's College of Maryland. Just a little bit of background. I've been with St. Mary's for a little bit over a year now, and I have loved every minute of it. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so we're gonna get started with a few questions um, that we have pre-prepared and sent to you ahead of time. Um, and then we'll end up end with a few community questions that we've received from our patrons. Okay, so first, what could you tell us a little bit about your school? So St. Mary's is a small public institution down in Southern Maryland in historic St. Mary's City specifically. Uh, currently we have around 1600 students enrolled and what that translates to in the classroom uh, is a nine to one student to faculty ratio. Um, there are all kinds of different programs that you would be able to major in and study uh, to also include pre-professional programs. The uh, total number and growing is uh, around 75 programs of study um, and we are in kind of a rural area and we have all kinds of things local to us and the St. Mary's River to take advantage of uh, year round in just like the most beautiful scenic setting. Wonderful. Um, what would you say students like most about your school? I believe that the ability to have such uh, like most opportunities to be able to be one-on-one -on -one with faculty. Um, the faculty will more than likely learn your name on the first day of class. Um, and I hope that that doesn't scare anyone because I promise that it is to your benefit that the faculty knows you by name and exactly what you want to do. Um, they encourage a lot of dialogue and uh, debate in the classroom and the um, all of the all of the resources available on campus are just like so vast. I, I don't want to I could go on, on and on about them, but um, there are a bunch of academic resources available. And as I stated, one on one opportunities with faculty um, and just overall just a really incredible and unique college experience in a public institution. Wonderful. Um, and what would you say is distinctive about St. Mary's? What uh, sets it apart from other schools? I think that our location is absolutely extremely unique. Um, pictured behind me uh, is part of our campus. It's the River Center. You'll find a lot of students that like to hang out there for various reasons. Maybe they're into water sports, but maybe they also want a peaceful place to study um, or just relax. Um, but other things that really kind of set us apart. Um, just that really include our size and the abilities that we have as like a small kind of intimate institution, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. And what type of students would you say you're looking for? Um, if I could take a word to describe the students that I work with on a regular basis in the uh, admission office, <laughs> the, the student ambassadors, they are so involved. And I would say that that's a pretty uh, common thing around the whole campus. Students are so involved in different activities and of course uh, within their programs of study, but also like the greater community around St. Mary's County. Um, They're just extremely involved people and people that want to learn the St. Mary's way uh, which is how most of the students try to, you know, live their lives on campus. Well, the whole community lives their lives on campus. Um, definitely would like to share a link regarding the St. Mary's Way um, and how just students are really friendly too. That's, that's definitely a distinctive marker about our campus as well. Awesome, wonderful. Um, and what academic programs are the most popular? 
top five academic programs uh, would definitely be psychology, English, biology, uh, environmental studies is really popular, and then also political science. Oh, wonderful. Um, and do, is your school only undergrads or do you have graduate students? Um, so we offer one grad, uh, graduate degree program, which is a Master of Arts in Teaching. So the majority of our students is undergrad, uh, which lead to really incredible opportunities for research for undergrads and um, just all of the experiences that you'll get to be able to put in your resume for whatever comes next for you, be it grad school or the workforce, you're going to absolutely be prepared uh, for all of that. Wonderful. Um, and as you know, right now we are in the middle of a pandemic, which is why we're meeting virtually instead of in person as we would prefer. Um, what can you tell us about uh, St. Mary's coronavirus plans um, for this year and for the coming academic year? So yes, I would really like to meet all of you in person. Um, so as it stands right now, what's going on at St. Mary's campus? Um, we are on campus presently. It has been um, one full month of classes on campus right now. Traditionally, we are a very, or excuse me, normally, <laughs> we're a really <laughs> traditional campus um, with in-person classes. Last March, we had to transition to everybody online, which happened very quickly. Um, but over the summer, they sent out a survey to find out what students' intentions were. So they had the opportunity to stay remote if they wanted to, but also they had the opportunity to move back to campus to take their classes and, and have that residential experience. So as of right now, um, <laughs> we are still on campus, uh, having classes, having as normal of an experience as possible. Um, you know, we do wear masks on campus. Classes are set up to be socially distanced. Classes are small anyhow, but even more so uh, to maintain social distancing. Um, and hopefully we're able to continue on. We're, we're really hoping to be able to get back to something more normal, but it's as normal as it can be right now. Um, I hope that that answered everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the health and academic support services that are available for students. Definitely. Um, the campus community is so supportive. Um, in academic support, you know, of course you have your faculty with their office hours um, wanting you to come by well beyond or well before you have any issues in class, not issues, but questions or concerns. Um, if you have something you'd like to discuss in detail, um, you'd certainly be able to stop by faculty's office hours, but there's also a writing and speaking center. There is peer tutoring, uh, peer mentoring available to all students in their tuition. And then there is also a uh, wellness center on campus for, you know, kind of general doctor's visits. Um, but there are also mental health counselors available on campus as well. Um, they have some open office, they have open hours, but then of course you have by appointment. And then should the need arise, there is transportation to a local hospital. Wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about what students could do to make their application stand out? Ah, yes. <laughs> I would say that the best thing that you could do is to make sure that you really discuss all of the things that make you you like all of your experiences um be it personal be it uh academic maybe you have a job maybe you've been involved in a club for your most of your life or an activity a sport what have you um we would like to know that you're as good of a fit for saint mary's you're going to thrive in a small rural setting as St. Mary's is going to be a good fit for you. So I, I would say that no information is, is too much information. And then of course, um, you know, we are reading recommendation letters and um, also your essay, you know, make sure that that essay is really personal to you. Wonderful. Um, and so um, the last question I have prepared um, before we get into the community questions is, what would be the next step for students who are interested in St. Mary's? That's a great question. So right now, we also have the ability to visit campus in person. 
Um, there are admission counselors in the office on campus Monday through Friday and some select Saturdays. So you can go to smcm.edu, click around. Um, it's fairly easy to find our visit page and our visit options. Uh, but you can register for an in-person visit if it fits your schedule, but we are also having virtual events and um, you can connect virtually with your assigned admission counselor. I'm the counselor for uh, Frederick County, so you can reach me um, either by email, you can sign up for a counselor conversation online, um, and we're also on a lot of different social media platforms as well if you would want to connect and follow with us there on Instagram and Facebook. Wonderful. All right. So I do have a few um, community questions that came in from some of our patrons. Um, so the first one, um, how is St. Mary's supporting the art, theater, music, and dance programs um, during this pandemic? So that's a great question. The, the, the buildings are open. People are doing things socially distanced, um, but I believe that there are still performances going on um, in, in a safe manner, of course, with masks and um, the ability to study music and uh, make art and all of that. I don't know 100% about how all of those classes are set up and all of those meeting times. I know specifically for clubs and things, a lot of them are using a Zoom platform to, um, to meet virtually. Okay, wonderful. Um, I also had a patron ask for a little bit more on your specific tips for applying. Like who should um, they ask to have their recommendations written by? Great question. Um, so your counselor, uh, your high school counselor, um, maybe a coach if you're involved in sports, maybe a supervisor uh, for a job that you might have, um, somebody that knows you really well and would be able to speak to you know, your successes and, and maybe even be able to give some insight to what makes you you, you know, from an outsider's standpoint. Wonderful. Okay. Um, and could you tell us a little bit about student activities at clubs? I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, how do they normally run and then how are they running right now? In normal times, <laughs> you know, they would do things in person. There are over 100 clubs and activities available on campus. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there are service-based organizations, academic clubs, uh, performance-based clubs, and right now a lot of them have set up online uh, or, you know, virtual, like on Zoom, but there is also uh, the programs board, which sets up all kinds of activities on campus. Um, I saw some tie-dyeing going on last weekend, and it's really happening in person. So there is human interaction going on on campus. Um, but I think this, I think I saw some like rock painting, um, and they had planned for outdoor movies and stuff. Uh, but it's been very rainy in our area of Maryland, so they yeah. had to uh, cancel that. <laughs> But um, they, are, they are still meeting in person. You know, of course, there's limited numbers to the gatherings and stuff. And with the mandates changing in Maryland, um, you know, larger groups are able to get together, but as long as they're maintaining social distance and wearing masks. Okay, wonderful. Um, and another question that came in was, what do you wish prospective students would ask you about St. Mary's? <laughs> I think that um, a really good question is um, what kinds of students are there? Um, I, I think that the friendliness of our campus definitely um, has a harder time jumping out virtually um, because we would all much rather be in person. But um, I would say absolutely come down to visit if you can. Very soon we're going to be having a self-guided tour app being launched. So um, if you can't register for a visit with the admission office, um, as it stands right now, we're really only hosting about one family at a time. So one family per hour. Um, so the limited, it's very limited availability, but you know, if you really want to come to campus, um, the app is going to be called Guidebook. It's not yet up, but will be soon. 
Um, there is literally a virtual tour that will start around the admission office. Um, you will hear a student ambassador talking about each stop, and then um, you'll be able to see pictures inside of different buildings um, describing different areas on campus, and you'll actually be able to see St. Mary's for what it is because you'll be there in person. So it does require a smartphone device. Um, just so you know, it's going to work on Apple products and Android. So I'm really excited for that to launch. Um, and I, I would say that, of course, you know, getting familiar with them on social media always helps. I, I know that this is really a tech savvy generation. Um, there's tons of stuff on YouTube that you can watch um, and uh, a social app that we're on called Zemi. It's a college based searched app um, and you can connect with other interested students and in current Seahawks. So there's a ton to do, a ton, a ton. You get to know the campus. That's my best advice. Awesome. Right. And we had a question come in about financial aid and scholarships. Um, what type of financial aid do you offer? Do you offer merit scholarships, athletic scholarships? So as a D3 school, um, there are not athletic specific scholarships. However, when you apply to St. Mary's, you're automatically considered for scholarships based on academic and merit. So your application, whether or not you apply on the Common App or St. Mary's application, you will be considered for scholarships, um, no separate application. But if you are interested in receiving federal funds, it's recommended to fill out a FAFSA. It will open up on October 1st. Um, you will need your parents' information. <laughs> um, so I know sometimes that can take a little while to get, but um, definitely fill out a FAFSA if you're attempting to get federal funding. Um, as a small school, we do give out a lot of money to our small population and something that we're really proud of for the third year in a row, we're actually graduating our students with the lowest debt in all Maryland public and private schools. So that means is when you graduate, you will be able to move out of your parents' house and be successful um, for whatever comes next. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, another question come in um, about uh, whether you offer freshman only seminars to help students get acclimated to college life. There is a program that is typically called SOAR, um, but this year they nicknamed it ESOAR because it was virtual, <laughs> um, but it was a special program for first year students um, and some transfer students, anybody new to the campus. Uh, to help them get familiar with St. Mary's and then they would be working with an orientation leader, they call that the O team, um, to help them learn all about St. Mary's prior to them coming. Like I said, this was a little different this year because we couldn't be on campus at that time. Um, but then, you know, a few short months later, uh, everyone was able to be on campus, but they were also able to know a couple familiar faces because they went through that program together. Sure. Okay. Um, and what about uh, housing options for students? Great question. So housing is promised all four years. There is uh, multiple housing options on campus and it's all on a credit based system. So when you apply your or as a first year student, rather, you have generally the least amount of credits. So your options are a bit fewer. Your traditional residence halls are, there are four. Um, one is all women, one is all men, and one is co-ed by floor. Um, and then we have what we call open housing. Uh, but as you gain more credits, you would have other options to include apartments, uh, suite style homes. A lot of athletes live in the suite style homes. They live with their whole teams. Um, and then there are also townhouses on home, or townhouses available on campus. <laughs> um, so, and those are typically for seniors and, and other upperclassmen. The more credits you have, the more options you have. And, you know, typically with our small population here, uh, many students right now are in single rooms to maintain social distancing. Um, I would say that there's a little over probably a thousand students on campus right now um, and the rest remaining virtual for the semester. Um, but, you know, they, they, have double, they have double furniture in the rooms. Um, mm -hmm but they're, they're in there by themselves for the time being. But yes, housing is promised all four years and you can have a vehicle on campus all four years as well. Wonderful. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about the dining options on campus? 
Yes, the food at St. Mary's is fantastic. I love um, to go to the great room. That's what we call our dining hall. In uh, normal times, it's typically a buffet kind of style servery where you would serve yourself. Um, but the, um, the different things going on, there are a lot more grab and go options available um, with people serving you rather than you serving yourself to uh, minimize contact with different things. But there are all kinds of uh, food options for different kinds of diets. If you're a vegan or vegetarian or maybe gluten sensitive, there are all kinds of different options. There's always, um, there's always like kind of junk food, <laughs> um, kind of always really good desserts, but I've seen um, sushi bar or like a sushi bowl, all kinds of different food, uh, make your own omelets on the weekends, um, you know, really just something for everybody. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about um, like, is work study available or are there jobs available on campus? Yes, lots of students have on campus jobs. Um, they can work anywhere from the athletic and recreation center to um, being in the career development center, um, all kinds of different you can be a student ambassador. So there's a bunch of different options for students to have employment. Um, and yes, we do have federal work study, but you also can just work a campus job as well. Wonderful. Okay. And we did have a patron ask about um, sports and what uh, sports teams are available on campus and how they're handling the pandemic right now. Unfortunately, the fall teams and just recently announced the winter sports um, were not able to have their seasons this year, unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, but um, they are getting ready to be able to practice together. We have 19 sports on campus, most of which is Division Three. However, we do have um, a sailing team that com competes in a D1 bracket. Um, which is really exciting. Lots of regattas happen right out on the St. Mary's River. Um, but while there is no football team on our campus, there is plenty of spirit and pride. Um, we did just recently have, well, last year, still fairly recent, we had a brand new athletic complex built um, in the back of our campus, the uh, Jamie L. Roberts Stadium, which houses all of our outdoor sports, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's lacrosse, and then uh, women's field hockey. Also, we have a track team getting ready to start. Oh, so wow. um, the first it will start as track, um, but eventually will become track and field. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. Um, so that is all the questions that came in from our community. Is there anything else that you would like um, to add about St. Mary's? The one thing I know that I didn't talk about and something that you should absolutely consider for any college that you look at is going to be the outcomes rate for students. I know I mentioned that you'll graduate with very little to no debt, um, but what I didn't discuss was the outcomes rate. And I know that um, for the class of 2018, I have not come across the class of 2019 or 2020 data yet, um, but within six months of graduation, that class of 2018, 94% of those students within six months were either gainfully employed uh, enrolled in grad school or opted to take a, um, a year to do service work like in the Peace Corps or AmeriCorps. So wow. students are extremely successful and that 94% outcomes rate is much higher than the national average. Um, so you will absolutely be successful and the uh, Career Center will absolutely be working with you to help you find, you know, whatever is next for you. Wonderful. All right. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier in this uh, recording, if you have any questions for Caitlin, since this is a pre-recorded program, please feel free to leave um, them in our comment boxes. We'll be happy to pass them along. Is there any way that they can contact you directly? Absolutely. The best way to get a hold of me these days is by email, um, as I am in the office sporadically, uh, but my email is kbwoods at smcm.edu. So kbwoods at smcm.edu. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin, and thank you everyone for joining us for this discussion with St. Mary's College of Maryland, part of Frederick County Public Library's Virtual College Fair. 
If you are interested in seeing more virtual programs like this, you can visit the Frederick County Public Library's website at fcpl.org. You can also find us on Facebook as Frederick County Public Libraries or on YouTube as Fred Co. Library. Team programming is also available on FCPL's Team Discord server. All of the virtual college programs will be recorded, captioned, and posted to the library's YouTube channel and Team Discord server. Thank you again. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks so much for having me. No problem.